Oshinoko at first glance is a series that many people might be put off by or think it's something else entirely, but that's what draws you in and what this first episode manages to do is on another level. But before that, what's up guys, Storm back here with another video, and if you like the content you're seeing, then be sure to subscribe, like, and comment, I mean they're all free so why not? If you want some dope channel merch or if you want to see more from me, then go check out my socials or go check out my other channels which will all be linked down below. But with all that out of the way, why don't we just dive right on in. So the story starts out with a doctor named Goro who's a fan of an idol named I Hoshino. He becomes a fan of hers from a previous patient named Serena who had passed away. She was a massive fan of I and her death drove him to become a fan as well. But then one day I shows up at the hospital pregnant. He's kind of shocked but he says he'll deliver her kid safely. But that's when you find out that I is also like 16 so a famous teen mom. Her agent or manager kind of wants to keep this under wraps for obvious reasons, so everyone is keeping it on the down low. That's when one day someone shows up while Goro's outside, and it turns out to be a stalker of Ai's. And Mans ends up murking our boy, but then he ends up getting reincarnated as one of Ai's kids. So it goes from Goro to Aquamarine to Hoshino, or just Aqua, hell of a name. He also has a sister named Rupi, who you also learn later on is his patient who died, Serena. They don't really know each other's identities, but they start their new lives together. But what I love most about this first episode is just how it subverts your expectations so much. At first you think it's going to be about Goro helping Ai deliver her kids safely and then see Ai raising her kids in the idol world with an idol mom and also being a teen mom and just dealing with all that in general. It appears as if it's going to go in that direction and the way it manages to execute that is just honestly amazing. You're drawn into these characters and you want to see what they can do and what's going to happen to them and just what their story is going to evolve into. But then this happens, and man gets reincarnated, and everything just changes so suddenly, and it just works. The situation changes drastically, and it then just goes with Aqua, now growing up alongside his sister Ruby, and for the next few years, they're just living comfortably with Ai along with her manager and the manager's wife. It looks like it's gonna be a slice of life story where the main character died and got the one thing he wished for after he died, uh, Goro getting reincarnated as Aqua, one of Ai's kids. So the story after this is Aqua realizing what's happened, and he starts to just live this new life. He accepts that he's been reincarnated, and he's also discovered that his sister was reincarnated also, and they begin to form a bond, which is going to last the entire series, and is just going to grow and develop as the series goes on. They start out being kind of annoyed at each other, but there's that big brother and little sister bond, even though they are twins. Deep down on the spiritual level, if you will, Goro is older since he's Aqua, and Serena's younger since she's also Ruby, and they've had this special bond even before they were reincarnated. So to see it unfold and just naturally progress, it just it just works. But all the while, while they're developing this bond, they're also living with Ai, and she's also an idol, so she has to go do idol things and she has to work. Like I said earlier, the manager keeps Ai having kids under wraps. So whenever Ai goes out, the two kids stay at home. But while they do, they plot on how to make Ai successful and just how to keep her safe and protected. And like I said about the slice of life aspect, you think it's just going to be these two just living their new lives with Ai as their mother alongside the manager and his wife. While keeping an eye on Ai, well, Aqua more does that. Ruby just loves the fact that she's her mom now. So after a few years, Ai's career starts to take off and she gets into various different things other than just being an idol, one major aspect being acting. And through everything that she does, everyone around her, her kids, uh, the manager, the manager's wife, and just the fans, and just everyone in general, sees that Ai is just absolutely amazing and that she's just a rising star with just pure natural talent. It's also shown that that Ruby and Aqua both have some talent as well, as Aqua, he's interested in the film industry and acting as well, but Ruby wants to follow in her mother's footsteps and become an idol. So like I said, you think it's going to follow these three on just their journey and developing as characters, but then there's one major fucking twist that just changes the story and just shocks you to your very core. The massive spoilers if you haven't watched the first episode. Uh, just go do that and just come back to this if you haven't seen it. So, uh, I, yeah, she, she fucking dies. Uh, the stalker who killed Goro before he reincarnated comes back at her apartment, and when I opens the door, he, uh, he stabs her. In the scene in this anime with I dying, 
is just absolutely beautiful. So after the stalker ran away and uh, is just bleeding out, Aqua finds her and he closes the door shut so Ruby doesn't have to see her favorite person in the entire world, her mother at this point, just dying. I holds Aqua and Ruby's on the other side of the door asking what's happening and Aqua just has tears in his eyes and you can see that this is just breaking him. And as you see the light leave her eyes, she tells her kids that she loves them and that in the future she wishes she could be with her kids and that she can see Aqua being an actor in the future and being in the film industry and she can see Ruby just being like her and being an idol in the future. And after that, I dies and it affects everyone, but the one character it affects the most is Aqua. So everyone that was close to I was shocked by her death, but the two that it shocked the most was obviously Aqua and Ruby. But with Ruby, she wanted to follow in her footsteps even more because of her death and no matter what, she wants to become an idol. But with Aqua, it's a whole other story. He realizes that the stalker couldn't have done this alone and he realized that there had to have been a third party, someone else involved. And he realizes the only person it could have been was his father, but uh, he has no idea who his dad is as I kind of kept that a secret. And he realizes that it must have been someone in the entertainment industry, and now he's on a revenge-filled quest to find his father and find whoever it was responsible for her death and kill them himself. So it subverted your expectations first with them being reincarnated, but then it did it even more and ten times better with Ai's death, because it's just a twist that you don't see coming. She opens the door and you don't expect anything bad to happen, but you realize that it is, and then she fucking dies. The way this first episode just draws you in is incredible. It subverts your expectations twice. And both of them just work. And after this, you can't wait to see what the series has to offer. But then there are the characters that just carry this first episode of Oshinoko. With the first being Aqua. He goes from being a doctor that's a fan of Ai when he suddenly realizes that he has to help deliver her kids and then being murked by a stalker, and then being reincarnated as her son, and over the course of the next few years, they grow even closer. And all the while, he's just having a chill life with his sister, just having fun, just relaxing, and just living a good life, a better life than he previously had. But then once I dies, everything changes, and he goes into this revenge-filled quest while just being dark gloomy and driven nothing but the idea of finding and killing his father. But then there's Ruby who before was a girl who couldn't get out of a hospital bed and she was a massive fan of I and that was her entire world. And then once she reincarnated she was the daughter of the person she idolized so much. This was practically a dream come true for her and she couldn't wish for anything better. And because of that she wanted to be just like I and idol as well. And because of that, I and Ruby grow closer and develop this mother and daughter bond that just pushes their characters even forward. And once I dies, Ruby's dream of wanting to become an idol is just pushed to the top even more. She wants to succeed no matter what. But then there's I Hoshino, who is easily the star and best character of this first episode. From the very moment she's introduced, she just has something different about her that just captivates you and you want to see where her story goes. You want to see how she develops as a character and you want to see how she raises her kids, how she grows closer to Aqua and Ruby, and where all of their stories go. The one big aspect about Ai though is that she considers herself a liar. She lies, and because of this, she's famous. She lies on stage in the way and how she acts and how she betrays herself and how she sings and how she makes everyone, all of her fans, thinks that she loves them, but she just loves the idea of them loving her because she didn't really have any of that growing up. But that's not a bad thing as it actually just makes her character relatable and just feel like an actual person. And when she has her kids, it's kind of the same thing. She never even once tells her kids that she loves them, and it's just because she doesn't see herself as a good mother. But over those first few years, she realizes that that's kind of wrong, and when she's dying, she finally tells her kids how she feels, and she tells them she loves them for the very first time. Now, this first episode is long as hell, as it's almost an hour and a half, practically four episodes in one, but they just wanted to get the prologue out of the way and I don't blame them. I like this format better than if it did it over four episodes. 
but the animation and music are honestly peak. Whenever a certain scene or moment is shown, the music and animation is just on point and it just fits with whatever is happening. And with Eye's death, that is just, that's just peak anime right there. The animation is beautiful. Their character expressions, their faces, the emotions on their face, and just everything that's happening in general is peak. And the music just makes you want to bawl your fucking eyes out, and it feels like you're right there with the characters. But all that was just the premiere or the first episode. I want to see what the rest of the story is like. If the rest of the anime is like this, then this is just going to be an anime for the books. I haven't read the manga, but if the rest of the story is like this very first premiere or first episode, then this is just, this is just peak fiction right here. But I also kind of have a feeling that this was just peak Oshinoko, and it might go downhill a little bit, but I know that there will be moments where the series will just be just as good. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know if you want to see more videos like this. And with that, I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.